everyone and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to paint a semi-abstract painting using as inspiration some of these lovely flowers from my garden and uh, they're all wildflowers and I'm just going to move them out of the way for a minute while I talk to you about the colours I'm going to use. I'm going to be using some of my favourite colours here and I've got here uh, Cobalt blue, quinacridone gold, transparent yellow, uh, hooker's green, no, sap green, that is the same thing. Um, quinacridone purple, uh, permanent rose, and alizarin crimson. And I'm sure I've forgotten something, but anyway, that will be enough to get me started. And I'm going to, first of all, take a good sized brush that will drop water in blobs. What shall I use? You know, I really, really, really have got to get myself a new hake, a new Ron Ranson hake. All the hairs are coming out the end there, aren't they? And that's no good. So I'll go to my second best hake. This is a cheap Japanese one with no name. So I'm just going to go like this. Oh, the blank sheet of paper such a problem. So that's now a wet blank sheet of paper. That's one step in the right direction. So let's take some colours. Let us take some, we we'll go from the lightest to the darkest, shall we? So this is yellow. It's, yeah, it's kind of cadmium yellow, I think. And then we're going to go for quinacridone gold. And I'm going to put that near. And then um, let's have some cadmium blue. some pink and some red and some green Maybe a little bit more blue. Maybe a bit more pink up the top. Okay. So that's a start. And what I like to do is think of it as being joining up the dots. So I'm going to swap to a smaller brush, I think, number seven. And then I'm going to just think of flowers, something specific. I'm going to try to just join up the dots a little bit. And where I've got green, I'm going to think leaves. The best thing really when you're doing this kind of abstract work is not to um, not to try to construct it too much so don't think of um, what it should look like just uh, put the colors where they seem to want to go do you see what I mean In other words, make nice patterns. Don't try to make a particular flower. OK, 
keep a lot of light. And if you get something that looks a little bit too wet, um, just grab a piece of paper towel and very delicately remind it that less is more. And if you suddenly find you're running out of inspiration about where to put your colours, just give it another smack of the brush. And after you've worked on it for a little while, you might want to let it dry. which is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to let that dry and see how that goes. So I've let this dry now and um, it's dried into a very interesting pattern with all sorts of interesting shapes in sort of indicating different kinds of flowers that might um, be existing here underneath all of these random shapes. So. What I'm going to do, and this is pretty much an experiment really, because um, you know you never know what's going to come out when you splash paint like that randomly. This is looking an awful lot like a larkspur or um, delphinium, is it? Uh, in the middle, that blue area there. And uh, this could be a foxglove here. Then these areas here of green, um, they could be transformed into leaves. And um, up here we've got some nice yellow ones which could be the foundation for daisies. So um, I'm not making too many expectations of myself here, but in front of me I do have my um, my uh, wildflowers in the vase. Um, I'll just move those into the picture a little bit. There we are. And uh, so I'm going to use those shapes to kind of just lead me in the direction of shaping these into into basically a, a floral display and I have really not much idea where it's going to go so I'm going to give it a try and we'll see what happens but I'm going to be using a Schlettler pigment liner 0.05 millimeter point there um, fine because I think this is this is relatively small it's only about seven by nine <clears throat> or ten inches um, in size so um, let us begin. So I'm going to find a, a yellow area there and uh, outline that to make that into the centre of a daisy. And then I'm going to just put some petals in like that and uh, just allow this to be kind of, um, I don't know, it's a meditative thing. It's early in the morning. What day is it today? Monday. Uh, I wouldn't say that I was completely awake yet, but this will serve a purpose. got a fever few here this I believe is the wildflower that I'm kind of modeling here hello Liam
and maybe we'll bring some stems in a little bit more structure <clears throat> and the leaves are frondy aren't they they're sort of um, yeah I'm not going to put any leaves in there yet I'm going to concentrate on the flowers first of all so we've also got some uh, chive some chives and they are kind of spiky so we could put a chive here make that a chive head and then after we've done these uh, inking in bits we can come back in with more color if we want so for example could take a small brush and a little bit more what color would we call chives we call them mauvish so then we can just come in like that and um let me see we've got uh, this one here has flowers which are Obviously, get bigger as you go down. You don't want to put in every single flower, just indicate it and then also indicate the stem. Again, then you can come back in with a bit more blue and just darken the centers a little bit, perhaps. And uh, so we have the stem of the chive. And um, let's see, the foxglove down here. some lilac, lilac pink for that too. And um, some leaves.
over here so this could be um, maybe we could make this into an area of uh, blackberry blossoms And then we can just drop in a little bit of pink on the edges of the flowers. Oops, it's a bit dark. And there. And these ones are green because this is one that's turning into a blackberry. So then that's kind of yellowish in the center. That. We can carry on adding them and joining them together. And so on and you can keep on doing that until you filled up the whole picture so I've moved on a little bit further with this um, in the meantime and uh, what I'm doing is I'm drawing in flowers and coloring them in as I go along and uh, the idea is to reach a certain point of uh, satisfaction where I don't want to do any more and the lovely thing about doing something like this and I don't always paint like this but there are times when when you want to, you don't set yourself any kind of time limit or any kind of goal or anything at all, really. You just paint, I do what I call slow art, which is just for the sake of putting paint on paper with no goal. You're not trying to achieve anything other than just some color therapy for yourself because that's what it's all about for me anyway the uh, the heart and the soul need to be bathed in color from time to time and I don't want to put a clock on it I don't want to say how much can you do in five minutes is that good enough have I succeeded have I failed no just give yourself as much time as you want don't even think about it don't even you don't even need to consider the length of time that you're going to spend doing this. It's not something that even needs to come into the to the question. You just do it as long as you want to do it. And then when you've done enough, you stop. And maybe you cut the paper off the board and you put it in a drawer somewhere. And then in 10 or 15 years, you see it and you say, oh, I didn't remember when I did that. I was feeling a bit down, but it really lifted my mood. And uh, so there, you know. I think colour is incredibly therapeutic and so many of us have turned to our painting or our crafts of various sorts in this pandemic time. The pandemic not being over, you only have to look at the figures in England to see that. It's not over, it's not going to be over anytime soon, so we better find things to do with ourselves that make us feel a little bit more at peace, I think. And for me, that's painting. Also knitting. I do a lot of knitting. I'm making a pair of socks at the moment for the winter. And when I finish that, 
I'm going to make some, a jumper, not a jumper, a gilet, a waistcoat for my daughter so that in the winter when she goes out to look after the sheep and so on and so forth, she doesn't freeze to death. And I'm trying not to buy real, real clothes, trying not to buy ready-made clothes um, anymore because um, we've got all this wool and I need to spin it and knit it and it's much better for you, isn't it, to, uh, to have things that you... I used to make all... Well, I made all Tamsin's clothes when she was a baby. Uh, obviously, everyone does, don't they? Or they always used to. And um, did that for a long time still. So that's, that's something nice to go back to, I think. So we will be doing that. <clears throat> This is a really good example of a way of experimenting with colors and seeing, you know, do you actually want to put cobalt blue with permanent rose? You say to yourself, I don't know, did that work? I don't know, I didn't like that, so I'll take that out. I don't know, maybe it did work, I don't know. Let that dry, see what happens when it's dry. And um, yeah, so this is, this is a good way of experimenting and just enjoying doing something. There's some little orange daisies down here and we'll give them a nice orangey yellow center. <coughs> and um, maybe we want to put some green in these, these leaves here. Remember to change color every time um, what was I going to say about that? Yeah, the reason why I use these little dishes, can you see them in the camera? Can you just, let's move these things out of the way a sec. I should be making sure that you can, because the reason I use these little dishes is so that I can mix colours up in them <coughs> while I'm going along. So. If I want to make this green a bit bluer, I just pick up a bit of blue, and if I think that's not quite right, it's a bit too blue, then I pick up a bit more quinacridone gold and pop that in. And this way, I can just change the color every time, almost every time I pick up the brush. Because this is a fairly small painting, I'm working with a number five round here. Um, so uh, that means I don't need very much paint for each brush stroke. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to put a little bit of quinacridone gold in there for the daffodil. I keep thinking I'm wondering whether to put <clears throat> another daffodil down here, but then I quite like the space that's there. And then I'm thinking maybe maybe these flowers here need yellow petals as well. So yeah, I keep going backwards and forwards between my pen and my brush. I'm going to put another um, rose in here. Wild rose or, or a bramble. I think they're quite closely related, aren't they? And then a little bit of pink. I suppose this could do with a bit of form, couldn't it? It needs its leaves though first, it needs its stem.
these could be cornflowers, couldn't they? If we did sort of spiky. Ah, oh, that should those should be poppies. Yeah, so we'll make these cornflowers because they've got maybe put a little bit more blue in there. These are going to be poppies, we need some red. <clears throat> and um, so we'll do something like that. We will need some black for the centres of the poppies, won't we? So then we need some dark green for leaves, stems. And then maybe we can just do a one that's opening here, yeah, they're sort of brighter green, aren't they, when they're just opening? So that's enough on that side, I think. And I think um, we probably need something here, but I'm not quite sure what. I think we're probably better go for something reasonably simple. So maybe just, oh, how about some, what we haven't got is lavender, have we? So we'll do some lavender. It's very um, outside at the moment. We've got lots of lavender. It's very strongly colored. That's exactly what that needed. I think that needs another flower in there and then I think it'll be done. Do you think it needs a daffodil or does it need something a little bit more subtle?
I'm thinking it better be yellow. Yes, I think so, I think. But I'm not sure about the daffodil. I think we'll make it yellow in the center like that. And then some golden yellow. I wanted to do. I shouldn't have just cleaned my brush then because I needed to put some shadow inside the daffodil. And then we'll probably give that a bit of an outline. Not too much. Okay. And maybe a little little bit yellow on these ones just to balance it. So there they are, I think that's done. I think that's finished for now. I think that can sit and dry and then we'll have a look at it when it's done and see what we think. So there's the final painting and I hope you enjoyed watching me do that and perhaps you'd like to give it a try. I'm sure you'll enjoy that. Um, if you did enjoy this one, then give me a like and subscribe and turn on notifications if you wouldn't mind, that really helps. And if you have anything you want to convey to me, say to me, tell me or ask me, please uh, just drop a comment in the box below. Also look in the description if you want information about the sorts of materials that I use. So that having been said, I shall say goodbye for now and I'll see you again tomorrow. So bye bye everyone. Bye bye.